Welcome to Future Talk. On today's program, we're going to talk about the rapidly growing field of robotics. My guest is Chuck Colby, whose career as an inventor has spanned more than 50 years. Chuck is credited with numerous technological firsts, including the first home satellite receiver station, the first low-cost telephone answering machine, the first low-cost cordless telephone, the first low-cost TV camera, a variety of digital video devices, police car computers, airport security equipment, and much more. He started his career by building what's believed to be the world's first commercial pocket transistor radio at the age of 12. Today he works mostly in robotics, and he's going to demonstrate a few of his creations. Chuck, what got you interested in working in robotics? I um, started inventing things when I was about 10 years old, and um, all, all the electronics pointed toward uh, things that moved, had motors in them, and, and so forth. And so that was just kind of a natural outgrowth into getting into robotics, where you got a machine that does something and has the capability to be usually remote controlled or uh, do a, a job. What are some of the most important developments going on in the robotics field now? Um, of course, the ones that sweep your floors, they've sold tens of millions of those and they're a, b a, big, a big market and a big uh, uh, thing that's going to be growing and growing. Um, but there's all kinds of new things coming out and we're going to show you one today this uh, telepresence robot which is going to be a really big thing because it lets you be in two places at once so do you think that in a few years everybody's going to have robots in their homes and everybody will rely on them for oh, all yeah. kinds of things yeah sure uh, especially uh, for doing things that you don't want to do clean the floor scrub the whatever uh, but also add functionality like the capability to uh, remotely control things have meetings when you're not in that location and so forth that can happen with the telepresence things. Now you brought that robot with you, so why don't we just go ahead and start that demonstration. Okay, and this is, I believe it's called the T-Bot. This is the uh, Tesla Robotics okay. T-Bot that... Uh, okay, so there is the robot on the floor, if the camera can get a picture of that. And you're controlling it with an iPad and the device itself um, is an iPad and it's mounted on a type of wheelbase. And I can drive that around, I can move it, and I can see where it's going from this end. So I could have this in my office and you could, I could be anywhere in the world as long as they're both within a Wi-Fi area and I can then drive this robot into the meeting and then turn it around and drive it into Joe's cubicle and turn it around and drive it into Pete's office. All by remote control and we're using an iPad here but this robot is designed to be able to be used with any tablet on any operating system as long as it has a front-facing camera. Now your iPad is uh, communicating with the iPad. How does that iPad tell that base what to do? There's a, um, a microphone in the robot that picks up the sounds that I'm generating with an iPhone using a touchpad on the iPhone. Now there'll also be a little joystick remote control that you hold next to the iPad that you can then control the robot with. So where do you think uh, most people will use that? Will they use it in business or hospitals? Where's the primary usage? Um, there's a new app that is called um, Vital Signs. That if you take the iPad 2 and aim it at your face and your chest, it will actually tell the respiration rate and the blood pressure. Now that has great applications. If that robot was in a hospital, a doctor could be driving it around making his rounds without being there. And there's actually a company in LA that rents a similar robot to hospitals and doctors for $7,000 a month that Sounds like a lot. They claim pays for itself in the doctor's time that he doesn't have to drive around. Now, our robot is going to sell for $2,400, so it'll pay for itself in, in a day or two. Yeah, sounds fascinating. 
Now you've got some other inventions here too, like this uh, disc-like object sitting on the table. What's that for? This is to be able to uh, drive it under a vehicle and it has a camera and a light so it can look for uh, contraband or explosives. Um, I've got four or five different categories of robots that I am involved with. Some of them are really functional and some of them have no function at all except they're, they're kind of cute. Like this one here. Looks this, like a Muppet. It, it doesn't do anything except that you can drive it around and play and it's got a camera in it so you could drive it under the bed and look for dust balls or whatever. There's another robot that I just built the other day that is uh, like a uh, Android robot that also can be driven around. But once again, some of these robots don't have any real function. They're just kind of fun to play with and fun toys. Well, mastering the mobility in itself is important because a robot needs mobility. It needs the ability to sense its surroundings. So I guess all of those areas are being worked on. There's a lot of work being done for the military that have really sophisticated electronics on them. And those robots are, are cost in the millions of dollars and tens of millions of dollars for R&D to, to design them. But their function is unbelievable. I mean, the Predator, uh, when it started out, was everybody thought it was a joke. You but it's the drone, the, the, pilot drone, the pilotless aircraft? Uh, aircraft. But it's been in operation now for seven or eight years, and they've they've uh, done an unbelievable amount of good things with it. We'll be showing a uh, video of a military robot shortly, but first, uh, there are some uh, robots in front of the table down here. Maybe we could get a shot of that at the bottom of the table and then briefly discuss. Yeah, um, so what are we looking at right there? Right here is a remote control per portable PA system. And it's designed to be able to drive into a crowd and talk to people without putting anybody at risk. And uh, it actually uh, can be remotely controlled and has a camera so you can see back from a remote location of what, what it's seen using the uh, heads up displays like, like that one. So you're seeing it by means of some type of uh, goggles. The next one over is a, is a similar one in that it... Uh, yeah, let's get back down to the uh, floor there to yeah, see the next on, uh, yellow object. The yellow one there. That one uh, is a, uh, a ca camera, has four cameras in it. So when you th throw it through the window where the bad guy is, you can see 360 degrees of what's going on. And likewise, the one right in front of it, if you pan down a little bit, that one is also a, a throw bot. You throw it through the window of where the bad guy is and you can drive it around and it has a camera in it. You can then see what's going on in the room and it may only last 20 seconds before it gets shot and ruined, but at least you'll be able to see how many people are there and what kind of guns they've got or whatever. So it looks like there are a lot of police and military uses. In fact, we're gonna be going to our video which is a video of a new type of robot called the Mule that's created by the U.S. Army. Now let's go ahead and roll that tape. 